You might have seen a lot of YouTubers, including me, talk about crowdfunding sites like Patreon. Sites like these enable people to give creators, or sometimes just individuals, some of their money. And on the surface, that all looks great, but is it? In an article in the socialist publication Jacobin, Keith Spencer outlines two potential problems with crowdfunding. The first, he says, is that crowdfunding might turn art into content, especially on Patreon. He says, art and content are not the same. Content is produced with a specific marketable goal in mind. Patreon turns artists into content makers whose creativity is moderated by their patrons. The idea is that if creators can only make stuff that will be financially appealing to their patrons, then that is a barrier to creativity. And on Patreon, you can earn rewards by donating to creators. Spencer says that that means that artists have to take time away from making art to make those rewards. Now, full disclosure, this show is crowdfunded through Patreon. So rather than try vainly to ignore that, I'm gonna embrace it and talk about my experience with it. I don't feel pressured to create a certain type of content by my patrons. The line between a good educational video and content that people will watch and share and enjoy is a line that I have to walk, but that comes more from the format of YouTube than the fans of the show. I'm also lucky with the rewards I give on Patreon too. I feel like the fans who support the show know that they're not buying something from me so much as getting a nominal material thank you in exchange for their generosity. And actually a lot of them say I don't need a reward and they turn it down. So for me, delivering the rewards isn't really much of a chore. I think you can be clever with the reward systems that you design as well. I mean, look at somebody like Jim Sterling who runs an extremely successful crowdfunding campaign, but he doesn't really offer much of anything in the way of rewards and that's fine. That said, I don't live exclusively off Patreon. I don't make enough off Philosophy Tube to survive off it exclusively. Y yet, it's, it's in a weird place where it's not a career, but it's not really nothing either, but that's not where my life is right now. And I can see how if my survival depended exclusively on Patreon, which in the very near future it may well do, I might well feel pressured then to create content that was appealing to patrons. I think Spencer's article prompts us to consider what the value of art is and whether art and creativity should really be beholden to financial constraints. That's something that artists themselves have historically resisted. Conceptual art, for instance, is a movement that grew partly out of the desire to create works of art that couldn't be bought and sold and commercialized. Here we're starting to get into questions like how do we value things and are all things really valuable in money, which is a very interesting field in philosophy. I recommend Michael Sandel's book, What Money Can't Buy, if you're interested in that. But the other big problem that Spencer has with crowdfunding is that it doesn't address the systems that make it necessary. This is more of a criticism of crowdfunding for things like medical costs and legal bills. And the problem, he says, lies in the fact that crowdfunding is an industry. When fans donate to this show, Patreon takes 5% of that, and that is how they make profit. Not just enough money to keep the site running, but actual profit. So Spencer says that when people crowdfund things like medical bills and legal costs, the crowdfunding companies are profiting from a system in which people don't have secure access to those things. He says, it is in these companies' best interest that social security is cut, that public housing is privatized, that supplemental nutrition assistance programs are eliminated. It means more people will turn to their for-profit platform. And yeah, that might be a fair shout. I started Philosophy Tube because the British government tripled university tuition fees and I suddenly knew people who couldn't afford to learn the things I was learning so I decided to give away my degree for free on YouTube. And ultimately, Patreon the company have profited from that. They have profited from the gating off of higher education. Another example I can think of is Laura K. Buzz, a creator whose work I follow who recently crowdfunded surgery for herself. And that's wonderful and I wish her a very speedy recovery. But unquestionably, GoFundMe.com has profited from a status quo in which that very important surgery is not reliably available to everyone. Spencer's not the only one to worry about this. In his essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction, philosopher Walter Benjamin notes that when film is produced as part of a capitalist filmmaking industry, it becomes very difficult for films to criticize capitalism because they're part of it. He says that when art is subsumed under capitalism, it becomes very difficult for that art to be a vehicle for social change. 
So long as the movie maker's capital sets the fashion, as a rule, no other revolutionary merit can be accredited to today's film. Spencer says that crowdfunding companies, for all the good they certainly enable, assume, or encourage us to assume, that personal charity is enough, when actually, he says, there are much deeper systemic problems. He writes, Those with money are told that the way to make the world a better place is to donate, that they are the key to preserving art, ending poverty, or saving lives. Yet there is a paradox here. The reason that schools, artists, and healthcare are underfunded is because rich people are undertaxed in the first place. And yeah, that might be a fair shout too. The dominant economic ideology in the West right now is neoliberalism, which assumes that when things like public services are cut and privatized, charity, rather than the state, will step in to fill the gaps that private companies don't fill in. Certainly in my country right now, people are dying for that neoliberal belief, although they may not always be the people who believe in it the most strongly. I don't think that makes it wrong to crowdfund or to support somebody through crowdfunding, but it does raise the very important question. How do we resist unjust economic systems from within? We've talked before on the show about how capitalism is great at creating new markets. It is Borg-like at assimilating things, even things that are resisting it. And I think it's fair enough to remind people that crowdfunding can't be a complete solution to the problems that neoliberalism and perhaps capitalism more generally throw up. It's something, but it's not everything. Even leaving aside the criticisms of mainstream economics, which we may not agree with, questions like this one, how do we be good and fair from within systems that can sometimes encourage us to do the opposite, crop up a lot in the philosophy of global justice. We encounter similar questions when we think about war, poverty, domestic policy, climate change, colonialism, and reparations. This is philosophy, and it's about as real and as practical as anything in your life can get. Now then, I could have just ended this episode there, but I decided to put my money where my mouth is. So I emailed Patreon with these concerns. Spencer didn't for his article, but I thought I'd give them a chance to respond. And Graham, their head of marketing, told me that the way they see it, a lot of artists would have to get freelance work or casual work anyway, maybe working in a bar or something. So at least through crowdfunding, they are getting to make something. This dichotomy between art and content is maybe more of a spectrum than a dichotomy, and at least through crowdfunding, they are getting to make something on that spectrum, even if crowdfunding does tend to tilt it more towards the content end. With regards to crowdfunding not really challenging the systems that make it necessary, he didn't so much have an answer to that one as admit, yeah, that can really be a problem. But at least, he said, more art is getting made. Patreon does take their 5% cut, but their line is that that goes towards improving Patreon as a service, and that it is less than traditional publishing companies would take from artists? You'll have to let me know what you think of that one. What do you think? When we take a step back from crowdfunding, what kind of larger philosophical issues get thrown up? I hope that this episode hasn't put you off crowdfunding completely, because if you did want to help me give away free education on YouTube, then I could really, really use the help. And don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>